So now some examples. Um, because quite honestly, in high school geometry, if we're working with midpoints in terms of finding where they are, we're pretty much always going to be on the coordinate plane. Uh, in other words, we're going to have to find x and y coordinates. Um, again, like you heard me say in the last section, if they don't give you a picture, draw a picture. It is a big, big help so that that way you're not trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing mathematically. The picture helps organize your thoughts, organize the information so that the math is easier. The second thing I want to point out is that for the two examples I'm going through and for many examples throughout the rest of the year, I may show things one way, but you may know of a different way. If you are unsure whether your different way will always work, just ask me. I don't mind if students have different ways of doing things. It's one of the things that I really love about math is there's almost always more than one way of solving a problem. And it's beautiful that way. The only thing I care about is that the method you're using will always give you the correct answer. So if you're doing it a different way and you want to show it to me, and 90% of the time I'll say, you know what, that is awesome. Keep doing it. It, it will work great every time. If I say, hey, I'm going to ask that you do it a different way than what you're doing right now, I will explain to you why. And the why will always revolve around there are going to be scenarios that could come up in our course where that way will not always give the right answer. Uh, but it's always lovely exploration. So here, we want to find the coordinates of M, the midpoint of segment ST, where S is at negative 6, 3, and T is at 1, 0. So I'm not given a picture, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw a quick sketch here. I'm not going to try to be perfect. Negative 6 and 3 is right here. And 1, 0 for T is right here. And I'm told those are the endpoints for the segment, and I need to know where's the midpoint. So I don't know the midpoint, M, but I do know that it has to be the average of the endpoints. So the way I find average is, well, I'm going to have to find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So to average the x's, I have negative 6 plus 1, and then there are two of those, so I divide by 2. And then for the y's, I have 3 and 0, and there are two of those, so I divide by 2. And then simplifying this gives me negative 5 halves for x and 3 halves for the y. And here is the coordinates for my midpoint. Very similar to what I did in the last example, or in the last video. More challenging is... I tell you the coordinates of the midpoint, I tell you one of the endpoints, and we have to find the other endpoint. So L is at 1, negative 1, and that is the med midpoint of segment AB. A is at negative 2, 7, and I want to find the coordinates for B. Again, there's no picture, so I'm going to start by sketching a picture. So I have 1, negative 1, so here is L. A is at negative 2, 7. L is the midpoint for this segment, so I have to go through L, and somewhere down here is where B is going to be located at. So uh, I'm very comfortable with algebra, so I tend to do this algebraically. There are methods of doing this that are more picture-based. Uh, and when we get back together in person, I can discuss kind of a picture-based approach to this. But in the interest of time, I'm going to go with the algebra one because that's one I'm just personally more comfortable with. I don't know the coordinates of B, so I'm just going to put variables for them. Because remember, variables are numbers we don't know. And since I don't know the X coordinate, I'm going to say it's X. Since I don't know the Y coordinate, I'm going to say it's Y. And then I have to try to figure out, how do I find those? 
well, since I know that L is the midpoint, I know that L has to be the average of my endpoints. So I start with, well, let's find the average of my endpoints. So if I take the average of my x's, that's negative 2 plus x, and then there are two of those, so I divide by 2. And the average of my y's would be 7 plus y, and there are two of those, so I divide by 2. But this has to be the exact same thing as 1, negative 1, because that, those are the coordinates of the mid, midpoint. Well, that means that even though I have an x here, it has to eventually simplify to give me this. So I can actually write an equation then of negative 2 plus x all divided by 2 has to be equal to 1. Similar idea, this 7 plus y over 2 has to be the same as negative 1 because they're the endpoint, they're the y coordinates. So I can say that 7 plus y all divided by 2 is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to solve my x's first. Uh, to get rid of the divided by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. And anything I do on one side, I have to do the other. So that'll leave me with negative 2 plus x equals 2. To get rid of a minus 2, I need to add 2 to both sides. And that leaves me with x equals 4. So this is going to be the x-coordinate for the b. For the y's, again, to get rid of the divided by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. And what I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So 7 plus y is equal to negative 2. To get rid of this positive 7, I need to subtract 7. And what I do on one side, I have to do on the other. I'm left with y equals negative 9. And so that's my y-coordinate. So these here. So now a quick check. On a graph, does b look like it could have coordinates of 4, negative 9? So if I go over 4, down 9, yeah, that is a reasonable answer.